I would like to express deep appreciation for the University of Indonesia, and particularly Professor Eko. So he, you organized this wonderful opportunities. So honestly speaking, I'm a little bit hesitating because in front of the professionals. So whether or not I can make a good presentation or not. Okay, let me start. Uh, okay, oh, sorry. Sorry, okay, sorry. Okay, I forgot. Oh, sorry. It's, uh, Okay. Okay. So let me add a few things for my introduction. Where where I'm not pure academics. I joined the Ministry of Finance in 1985, then quit the civil service in uh, 2012. So it's been uh, seven and a half years since I quit. Why? Well, I need freedom of speech. You know, government officials not allowed to speak freely, but now I enjoy it. I, so my academic uh, capability is not so high, but uh, I try to tell the truth what's going on inside Japanese government. And I always, I'm always thinking, you know, in teaching my classes, try to fill the gap between the theories and practices. So because most students are civil service, not only Japanese, but also foreigners. So they don't, they don't like just the theories. You know, practice is important and how to change, actually. So, again, I try to fill the gap, and then I try to be uh, honest. Okay, today's agenda. So I'm going to tell you the background and purpose of my presentation. Well, you know, Prime Minister Abe, current Prime Minister Abe, he's very unique. He became the Prime Minister twice. So second administration continues for the more than six years. This is amazing because now it's ranked as the second longest in terms of tenure. Abe succeeds in running the government. So that's why he's called only one big, which means he can do whatever he wants. So Japanese politics really changed. Different from the traditional one, where decision-making process is fragmented. Even the prime minister cannot, de cannot decide in the past. Different from the you know, president in your country. So his success is mainly because of the political administrative reforms uh, in 1990s to strengthen the institutional capacity of prime minister in the sense which seeks the governance of Westminster model, like the UK. But does it really improve the performance? I wondered, you know, it really improved the performance of major public policies. This presentation discussed the transformation of Japanese politics and administration by focusing on the governance of policy making process and also the relationship between the politicians and uh, bureaucrats. Because relationship between politicians and bureaucrats changing. So that's what I want to argue. Okay, outline. Okay, firstly, I overviewed how Japanese politics has been changing. Then second and third, uh, we will discuss the second Abe administration. Then now I'm studying, so still ongoing. I'm studying, uh, I'm doing international comparison in decision making, policy making process between Japan and other major OECD countries. And so please interrupt me anytime. Please, please give me a question. No, 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 you need not wait. So please interrupt me. Excuse me. Yes. Abe administration, which Abe? Abe, Abe. Prime, the name of our, our Prime Minister. Minister. Yes. Because we have to add the, uh, this, this Abe uh, Prime Minister. Yes, pre now, yes, now. No. Now. Not his father. He, not father, yes, not father, not father, yes. <laughs> oh, sorry, yes, you know your, his father. Yes, yes. <laughs> because he's, he's, he, f he comes from, you know, political families. Yeah, okay. Yes, Dynastic. fathers, uh, dynasty, yes, exactly, exactly. Okay. exactly. okay. Uh, yeah. Please. Yes, please. Uh, according to you, what is the strength of Abe administration? The strength. Yes, yes, wait a moment. <laughs> That's the point what I want to argue. So I, you know, it's not good to you know, tell the answer first. <laughs> yes, that's the that's point. OK, firstly, uh, this slide illustrates how Japan has been struggling since the early 1990s when experienced the burst of the bubble economy. So, 1990s, 
Okay. Okay. Well, Japan was called the number one. You know, Professor Ezra Bogan, who is an American professor, he wrote, he wrote a book, Japan is number one. So because in the 1980s, Japanese economy was expanding like a China at the moment. So, but after the end, Ezra Bogel analyzed why Japan became number one. He analyzed the so-called Japanese business model, such as long-term employment, or uh, companies like uh, families, but also Vogel underlined the capability of the B Japanese bureaucrats. <coughs> so in a sense, Japanese bureaucrats uh, were developed industries and uh, leading Japanese economy societies. Well, to some extent, but I, I think it is a little bit exaggerated. But I wonder, you know, where such a capable Japanese bureaucrats has gone because ranking. So, you know, now the China, Japan is competing. So, Abe administration was born in December 12, 2012. Uh, he wanted to uh, revitalize Japanese economy because, you know, ranking is falling. So, I understand. I do agree with his idea. So, but, well, how? <laughs> how you know, make Japan come back? Mm -hmm. So, chronology, yes. Uh, again, we have lots of problems after the birth of bubble economy uh, in the 1990s. So, birth of bubble economy gave an opportunity for so-called structural reforms. So this slide summarizes uh, major events in Japanese politics, public administration. We have two major reforms. One is uh, 1994 electoral reforms. We introduced so-called first pass the post system, which means you know looks like a British system. Each constituency elects only one, you know politicians, each constituency. But before that, we, our electoral system, but the lower house, uh, each constituency elects three or four politicians, three or four. But uh, in other words, in the, within the ruling party, liberal democratic party, uh, can elect two or few uh, politicians within the same constituencies, which brings so-called political factions. You know.
Chen, uh, University of Indonesia this is the first time. Well, uh, I'd like to express deep appreciation for the University of Indonesia, and particularly Professor Eko. So he, he organized this wonderful opportunities. So honestly speaking, I'm a little bit hesitating because in front of the professionals. So whether or not I can make a good presentation or not. Okay, let me start. Uh, I oh, sorry. Sorry, okay, sorry. Okay, I forgot. Oh, sorry. It's, uh, okay. Okay. So let me add a few things for my introduction. Well, well I'm not pure academics. I joined the Ministry of Finance in 1985, then quit the civil service in uh, 2012. So it's been uh, seven and a half years since I quit. Why? Well, I need freedom of speech. You know, government officials not allowed to speak freely, but now I enjoy it. I, so my academic uh, capability is not so high, but uh, I try to tell the truth what's going on inside Japanese government. And I always, I'm always thinking, you know, in teaching my classes, try to fill the gap between the theories and practices. So because most students are civil service, not only Japanese, but also foreigners. So they don't, they don't like just the theories. You know, practice is important. And how to change, actually. So again, I try to fill the gap, and then I try to be uh, honest. OK, today's agenda. So I'm going to tell you the background and purpose of my presentation. Well, you know, Prime Minister Abe, current Prime Minister Abe, he's very unique. He became the Prime Minister twice. So second administration continues for the more than six years. This is amazing. Because now he's ranked as the second longest in terms of tenure. Abe succeeds in running the government. So that's why he's called only one big, which means he can do whatever he wants. So Japanese politics really changed. Different from the traditional one, where decision-making process is fragmented. Even the prime minister cannot, de cannot decide in the past. Different from the you know, president in your country. So his success is mainly because of the political administrative reforms uh, in 1990s to strengthen the institutional capacity of prime minister, in the sense which seeks the governance of Westminster model, like the UK. But does it really improve the performance? I wondered, you know, it really improved the performance of major public policies. This presentation discussed the transformation of Japanese politics and administration by focusing on the governance of policy-making process and also the relationship between the politicians and uh, bureaucrats. Because relationship between politicians and bureaucrats changing. So that's what I want to argue. Okay, outline. Okay, firstly, I overviewed how Japanese politics has been changing. Then second and third, uh, we will discuss the second Abe administration. Then, now I'm studying, so still ongoing. I'm studying, uh, I'm doing international comparison in decision making, policy making process between Japan and other major OECD countries. And so please interrupt me anytime. Please, please give me a question. No, 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 you need not wait. So please interrupt me. Yes. Abe administration, which Abe? Abe, Abe. Yeah. Prime, the name of Abe, Abe Prime Minister. Prime Minister. Yes. Because you have to add the, uh, is this Abe uh, Prime Minister? Yes, pronounced, yes, now. Oh, okay. Now. Not his father. He, not father. Not father, yes, not father, not father, yes. <laughs> oh, sorry, yes, you know your, his father. Yes, yes. <laughs> because he's, he's, he, f he comes from, you know, political family. Yes, Fantastic. fathers, uh, dynasty. Yes, exactly, exactly. Okay. Uh, may I know yeah. This, uh, question? Yes, please. Uh, according to you, what is the strength of Abe administration? The strength one. Maybe if you want to. Yes, <laughs> yes, wait a moment. That's the point what I want to argue. <laughs> so, I, you know, it's not good to, you know, tell the answer first. <laughs> yes, that's the a, that's a point. Okay, firstly, uh, this slide illustrates how Japan has been struggling since the early 1990s, when experienced the burst of the bubble economy. 
So 1990s, OK, OK. Well, Japan was called the number one. You know, Professor Ezra Bogel, who is an American professor, he wrote, he wrote a book, Japan is number one. So because the well, 80s, Japanese economy was expanding like a China at the moment. So, but after the, and Ezra Bogel analyzed why Japan became number one. He analyzed the well, so-called Japanese business model, such as long-term employment, or uh, companies like uh, families, but also Vogel underlined the capability of the B Japanese bureaucrats. <coughs> so in a sense, Japanese bureaucrats uh, were developed industries and uh, leading Japanese economic societies. Well, to some extent, but I, I think it is a little bit exaggerated. But I wonder, you know, where such a capable Japanese bureaucrats has gone because ranking. So, you know, now the China, Japan is competing. So, Abe administration was born in December 12, 2012. Uh, he wanted to uh, revitalize Japanese economy because, you know, ranking is falling. So, I understand. I do agree with his idea. So, but, well, how? <laughs> how you know, make Japan come back? Mm -hmm. So, chronology, yes. Uh, again, we have lots of problems after the birth of bubble economy uh, in 1990s. So, birth of bubble economy gave an opportunity for so-called structural reforms. So this slide summarizes uh, major events in Japanese politics, public administration. We have two major reforms. One is uh, 1994 electoral reforms. We introduced so-called first pass the post system, which means you know looks like a British system. Each constituency elects only one, you know politicians, each constituency. But before that, we, our electoral system, but the lower house, uh, each constituency elects three or four politicians, three or four. But uh, in other words, in the, within the ruling party, liberal democratic party, uh, can elect two or few uh, politicians within the same constituencies, which brings so-called political factions. You know, LDP consists of several political factions. So each faction nominates each candidate or in the, uh, one constituency. But that's a problem. I'm going to explain later. The another second uh, reform is the 1998 Central Government Administrative Reform, which try to strengthen the prime minister's power. power. So through, well, within 20 years, where we have been doing a lot of reforms, finally, 2014, this is the last reform in relation with the public administration, which is civil service reforms. Actually, Abe became the prime minister first 2006. He started civil service reform, but it failed, simply because well, civil service reform, it's very, it is very difficult, because bureaucrats are always against, you know, always against. But in Indonesia, yeah? against uh, civil service reform, it's not bureaucrat. Okay, food. Why? <laughs> Why? Why? I see, I see. Okay, but after, so in short, after, before the world, before the economy, LDP politicians, bureaucrats were partners to maximize their interest. But uh, 
you know, high economic growth was over. So LDP politicians criticize or uh, criticize the, the failure was due to the bureaucrats. So that's why LDP politicians try to reform civil service system. So then let me summarize what we seek in Japan in terms of politic administrative administration in brief in two decades. So left chart is an old model, I mean 50s, 60s, where, where, when Japan was developing so quickly. So member of ruling party, LDP, we call the Zoku. Zoku means a tribe, agricultural tribe, educational tribe, industrial tribe, which means, yes, politicians are supported by stakeholders. You know? So stake, politicians supported by farmers. And, but also the civil service, they are partners together with I, I miss the uh, industries, industries. They are called so-called iron triangles. Looks like American system. So industries, politicians, bureaucrats, they are partners, they were partners to maximize their interest. That undermined prime ministers or cabinet powers. I'll give you one example. 10 years ago, uh, Minister, of, Minister of Agriculture, uh, named Ishiba, he wanted to change subsidies to the rice farmers because rice, you know, product, rice pro producing rice in Japan not competitive. Very, the cost is very high. So agriculture minister tried to, you know, uh, change the subsidies, tried to strengthen the rice farmers. However, his idea was denied because agricultural tribe and even the bureaucrats in, in the minister, Ministry of Agriculture, they denied the minister's idea. So I'm, I'm not saying uh, minister, agriculture minister's idea is good or not, but you know, minister, relevant minister decides, or cabinet discuss and deny, discuss, decides. But look at the cabinet, prime minister is very small. So I often call this is a party bureaucratic government. But don't be misunderstood. This model worked in 50s, 60s, 70s when Japan was developing. Because, you know, uh, schools, hospitals, highways, lots of, you know, public service not enough. This model contributed to increase the supply. It worked. However, Japanese economies developed, international uh, globalization is, is increasing, so trade negotiations or, you know, uh, we need to decide quickly. We need powerful prime ministers. So that's why so this, we needed this model, like a British model, so-called the cabinet government. So in short, Prime Minister Abe, yes, realized this model. Prime Minister, cabinet office, it is strong, strong enough to decide quickly. However, I really wonder, you know, we, ne we need uh, better public policies. You know, decide quickly, of course, important. But uh, government should be assessed by you know, policies or their performance. So, I mean, what I'm wondering, yes, we achieved, we have achieved this model. But the question is, public policy is really good. So that's what I'm going to discuss today. Okay, just uh, uh, summarize major characteristics of Japanese government. So in short, as I explained, so traditionally, uh, cabinet prime ministers in Japan is weak. So our model is very different from the 
so-called Westminster, Westminster model. But I'm not saying Westminster model is really good. Because you look at the European countries. Continental countries, I will discuss later. Basically, they are based on so-called consensus model. British model, Westminster model, is a little bit exceptional. It's not, it's not always good. OK. So another, yes, uh, reforms uh, started 2001. Again, to strengthen the institutional capacity of prime minister political leadership. How? Firstly, prime minister can now can propose his or her own policies. Before, uh, relevant uh, cabinet law does not allow prime minister to propose independently from the prime ministries. Secondly, strengthen, strengthen the cabinet secretariat special advisor to the prime minister, more other political appointees, more powerful capacity, capability for policy making and coordination. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, new office, uh, new uh, government office called cabinet office. They have four special advisory councils, advisory bodies, chaired by the prime minister or chief cabinet secretary, mm -hmm. such as economic fiscal policy councils. So prime minister can uh, discuss his idea, economic policy, by himself, <coughs> rather than, I mean, depending on line ministry. Mm. So, so uh, yes? So what yes? do you mean with uh, policies independently? I mean, what kind of policy? This is, uh, any policy. Any policy? Yes. Uh, Defense or securities, economic policy. I mean the level of policy. So in Indonesia, we have Uh -huh, yeah. Presidential regulations, uh, minister regulation, and so on. Uh -huh. So what do, what do you mean with poli uh, policy, this basic policy? OK, our, well, yes. If when government asks the new legislation or amend the laws, yes. of course, uh, the cabinet, United, United should, cabinet is required to, required to approve unanimously as a cabinet decision, then ask a parliament. Mm. So I mean, proposal for any proposal, I mean, legislation or cabinet order, administrative order. So, well, it's a little bit, it, you, may, you may feel technical thing. But before, when, so if prime minister well, wants to amend some legislation, prime minister require, was required to ask the line ministers, prime minister cannot propose, regardless of line minister's idea. But now he can propose. Ah, yes, it's a, maybe technical, but very important. Yes. So, and this is a center of the Japanese government. Well, yes, cabinet, under the cabinet. Yes. Uh, two offices, cabinet secretariat, which is used to be, already we had. Then also, cabinet office was newly created. So I think it's very complicated. <laughs> so cabinet secretariat, secretariat includes some senior politicians, but also senior bureaucrats, including political appointee. And some uh, offices, internal offices, national security secretariat, cabinet bureau personal affairs, which is newly created, I'm going to introduce later, and some ministers without portfolios or parliamentary secretariat. And also the cabinet office has some uh, agencies, internal office. So, well, strengthened, but uh, personally speaking, very complicated. So that's another problem. Professor yes, yes, please, please.
game. Uh, I want to ask you something. You said that you have to make a quick decision. Is this only consideration on the budget? Okay. Uh, this, uh, okay, you make a point. So, yes, if I have another lectures, I can uh, discuss the budget system in Japan. Because you know that Japan, we had the largest debt within the OECD countries. Yeah. Debt, yeah. about 25% of GDP, yeah. extraordinary. Why? So, sim simple answer is Japanese finance, I often say, Japanese finance minister is the weakest finance minister around the world. In the past, finance minister was strong, but now very weak. Oh, yeah. So because, yes, this is rating this model. OK, line minister, line ministers and Zoku, they try to increase their budget. But finance minister is not so strong. So I mean. Cabinet, historically speaking, is yes, weak. So cabinet, not only cabinet, but also finance minister cannot control. So Prime Minister Abe, he is strong. He, can, he, he could reduce. However, he is not interested in budget or economic policy. You know, he is young, right-wing politician. He is interested in defense, national securities, foreign affairs. So Celtics, Abe, he could, but he's not in the, he cannot exercise his power. So, so we can copy this weakness of, uh, weaknesses process of Ministry of Finance in Indonesia. Eh? Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so I have a question. Yeah, please, please. So from whom they get uh, the money? Because you say that 50, uh, sorry, 75%. Because uh, yes, like uh, Malaysia, now they, Coming trouble because they have uh, more than 50 percent yeah, yeah. of GDP as a uh, debt. But from whom the, the Japanese uh, government get? Is it you mean that they get the money from the local bank or something like that? <coughs> local resource money. Taxation, yeah, revenue. Yeah. But we we have, we do a lot of borrowing. Yeah, borrowing yeah. from whom? From oh, it's uh, another good question. Internally. We are, not, we are not depending on the foreign investment. Yeah, that's, that's why, yeah, at the moment, sustainable. At the moment, at the moment. But I don't think for future. Because aging, population is aging rapidly, which means uh, savings is expected to decrease. Well, some experts estimate within five to 10 years, we will we, we, we need borrowing from abroad. That's the point. But at the moment, OK, after the Olympic Games, yeah. 2020. You so mean from the internal society? Yes, internally, yes. Not, not the local bank? To the, uh, local government, local banks, uh, Japanese banks, yeah. mainly. Or Japanese banks means people, Japanese people, particularly elderly, they like savings. Mm -hmm. Or in other words, they don't believe the government social welfare program. They want. They need. They wanted to save by themselves. So I mean, I can. Uh, curiously, you know, long-term interest rate is at the moment negative. Yeah. Can you imagine? Ten years government bond minus 0 0.0 0 0.15. Negative interest means government can make money by borrowing. But of course, on the other hand, Bank of Japan has huge liabilities. Government makes money, but Bank of Japan lose, losing. So yes, I mean, this model, uh, I mean, this model also were contributing to the larger deficit in terms of strength of finance minister. Taxation, uh, tax zoku decides everything, rather than the Minister of Finance. Mm. Sorry. It's like this uh, moving the money from the uh, private sector to the government. And also, like politicians want to, they want to provide incentives, tax incentives, you know, 
reduction of taxation of private sectors. So a little bit like transaction, is it? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. yes. Political, you know, political campaign or maneuvers. Not only the spending, but also taxation matters. You can give an incentive. Tax holiday, exactly, it's incentives. So, yes, it's uh, so called uh, clientelism. Clientelism. Okay. Yeah? How long uh, does it take to transform uh, from the left to the right? Or well, it takes 20 years or 30 years. Okay. Yes, but in a sense, achieved by Prime Minister Abe. This model, yes, achieved, I think. Nowadays, in, in under the Abe administration, second administration, bureaucrats, Zoku, are very weak. So Prime Minister Abe can decide whatever he wants. Yes, actually, we achieved. But again, I wonder, I wonder. Because you, know, you need to assess. This is just you know, uh, measures. Performance, results matter. Professor Tanaka, do you yeah. think that small data can, can also make bureaucracy in Japan system unstable? Yeah, I see. Because normally we, we understand that uh, Japanese bureaucracy is very stable. Oh, yes, of course, yes. I, I think. Whoever will be the prime minister yes, exactly. in the finance of yes. bureaucracy. You are right, exactly. Still. Yeah. Remain, yeah? yeah. And the, the new model, what do you think that can also make unstable bureaucracy in Japan? Well, I think to some extent unstable, but uh, well, in short answer, I, I will discuss later. Short answer, most senior service at the moment, oh. in my observation, most senior civil service becoming just yes man to the yes. prime minister. Oh, that's right. Do not tell the truth. To the prime minister, I think it's it's wrong. Yeah. You know, finally, prime minister, yes, sh they should decide everything. But yeah. after discussing, or a uh, lot of information, then prime minister decides. Yeah. That's the model of the democracy. But nowadays, bureaucrats do not tell the truth. Okay. That's a problem. Okay. Okay. Another. Interesting, one of the uh, reforms which make prime minister stronger, uh, economic and fiscal council. Uh, it's a unique. The members, not only politicians, but also the uh, experts from the business world or uh, academics. So analyze policies, uh, problems, then provide opinions to the prime ministers. So, Koizumi administration, which uh, was from 2001, 2006, this council worked so much, particularly privatization and lots of reforms, structural reforms, because, you know, if you start structural reforms, you may face a lot of, you know, oppositions, oppositions. Structural reform is not easy. Bested the interested are always against. But the, then Prime Minister Koizumi, he tried to persuade people, politicians, by using this council. And in short, making issues more transparent. He informed the people why privatization is necessary, why structural reforms are necessary. So it worked but only in uh, Koizumi administration. Abe, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't like this council. He established another council. So, okay, and I'm not going into detail. Lots of academics, how the Japanese politics changing. 1995 political system, you know, developed by the LDP. So in short, that model was over. So Japanese politics is changing dramatically. So then I'm going to, yes, Abe administrations. So surprisingly, 
continuing because, you know, uh, sorry, I forgot numbers. After the World War II, we have 50 or 40, 50 prime ministers. Average tenure of prime minister, less than two years. Within the 30 years, well, 30 years, I had 25, sorry, 20 or 22 uh, two prime ministers. Yes, so unstable. Within, within the 30 years. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yes. So unstable. Have you stayed in the prime minister for how long? Six and a half. Amazing. Koizumi, uh, five years. Also amazing. But uh, he, you know, longer than Koizumi. Now, end of this year, end of this year, Abe is expected to be longest. Longest. So he's, he's, he's ambitious. Longest prime minister. Powerful, yes. Why? One of the reasons, yes, I have already explained. Prime Minister's institutional capacity was strengthened. But also, election, he won uh, December, sorry, November, October, November 2012 elections, low house elections. 2012 low house elections, uh, this one, uh, and next one, also this one. He won three times low election. Then, in addition to the Two times, two second times, upper house elections. So next week we have a, uh, upper house elections. So he's expected to win. So uh, amazingly, he won five, six, both lower house, upper house. Why? Well, yes, you make a point. <laughs> Why? Yes. Uh, the only thing the answer is everybody laughs. No, no, no. <laughs> Particularly, women don't like because Abe is a right wing. He he tried to you know strengthen the Japanese army. So women don't like because she, women don't want her son go wars or militaries. One of the reasons uh, oppositions fragment. Opposition just a mess. I always criticize Prime Minister Abe administration <laughs> to like today. But I also say uh, Abe or ruling party is better, sorry, worse is better than worst. Worst means opposition. <laughs> Oppositions fighting each other rather than you know, to be united. Opposition within internally fighting. So, and also Abe, where so far, within the LDP, there are a lot of you know, senior, strong politicians, you know, counter, as a counterbalance. But uh, now the LDP, most seniors are gone, are died. So, I don't see other powerful politicians within the LDP ruling parties. So that's why Abe, uh, he's, ra he's lucky. <laughs> Opposition, ruling party, no strong politicians. Lucky. Lucky, he's lucky. Lucky, yeah. Prime yeah. Yeah. lucky prime ministers. Lucky <laughs> yes, lucky prime ministers. <laughs> and economic public finance and, okay. Final administrative reform is uh, Senior, service, senior civil service system. In short, we introduced so-called senior executive service, which is introduced in other countries, like uh, originally introduced by the US, 1979, but followed by the U Australia, United Kingdom, Korea, most other countries, you know, managing senior levels, different system. So, Firstly, if you want to be promoted, you need to clear qualification assessment and become the candidate. You need to be listed on 
candidate list or senior, senior executive service. Then, how to be appointed? Uh, appointment to each position after the consultation between the Prime Minister and Chief Cabinet Secretary, Secretary and Relevant Minister. Three politicians discuss. For instance, if I'm a candidate to the well, Secretary, uh, Director General of Taxation or Budget Bureau, three politicians discuss whether or not I'm uh, you know, uh, suitable to the Director General. So then, Cabinet Bureau Personal Affairs created to managing uh, you know, SES. So, and also special advisor to Prime Minister and Ministers are introduced. What I'm saying, uh, in short, Japanese civil service system for the British model, in, in terms of you know, made base, political neutralities, I mean, theoretically speaking, theoretically speaking, um, because NPA, National Public Service Act, stipulates also ministers, including the prime minister, appoint all civil servants. So they could be appointed politically. In other words, if you are, uh, if I am, a, I were minister, and if you are very obedient to me, so I can say yes, next time I can appoint you a director general. <laughs> Just a personal connection rather than, you know, capabilities. I mean, yes. So, I mean, original idea, reform about to appoint best senior officials across the government, you know, try to, you know, appoint best and brightest within the government. Yeah. It's a good. I, th I, don't, I don't deny the idea of the, these reforms. By reality, more civil services are much more vulnerable to the political control. Well, I mean, I need to explain. So, this I classified, uh, made, well, I classified the senior service system among the major civil service. You know, look at the US. Senior levels, president appoints arbitrarily. Now, you know, can you imagine Donald Trump, you know, fired by, by Twitter. Twitter. <laughs> because that is the American way. President can arbitrarily appoint or dismiss. And also, open recruitment system. Senior levels, uh, secretary, often come from outside government. But also other English-speaking countries, New Zealand, UK, Australia. Yeah. So Indonesian style is in the, in the British? Yes, yeah, sir. Well, so, so you mean the open recruitment system? Or you have you have the open recruitment system? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we 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 Good. Uh, enacted new civil service law in 2014. I see. So at the same time with you. When you uh, introduce this model. Okay, good. Yeah. Uh, interesting. Okay, I, I need. I must study, you know, your system. <laughs> so, you know, these countries appointment based on the merit class, merit basis, <laughs> until the secretary general. But nowadays, I think you know the senior levels now open competition. Yeah. Australia, yes. except the secretary general, all the senior levels, yes. you need to compete. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, now getting open and open. Oh, S1 one and S1 two. Yes. The, the director general. Yes, open the good system. The general should be open yeah. nationally. Yes, nationally. So, I mean, private sector can apply. I mean, gradually changing. In the past, this country also it was a you know, closed system. But now, getting open and open. Japan and Korea, located in the totally opposite to the US, mm. closed and a point based system. However, this is a theory. Theoretically speaking, we follow the British model I mean, in terms of merit basis. But Japan minister, prime minister, direct, can directly appoint. So, in other words, if you have a special relationship to the politicians, you could be promoted. 
So I think German, Japanese model is similar to the Germany French. Because in France, Germany, senior levels appointed politically, but not open system. So once you know graduates become civil servants, they are expected to you know go up the ladders. You know? But if you want to be promoted, in France, Germany, you need to have the special relationship politicians. Then you are, if your political friend becomes the prime minister, you could you are likely to be promoted. Promoted. Yes. Uh, if Japan have a special institution to control the implementing of uh, merit list. Mm -hmm. NPA. Yes, control. yes, yes. Control. We have this independent, independent. Yes, so agencies. But relatively speaking, uh, national personal agencies, the their strength is weakening because due to this reform. Reform. Because now there's cabinet bureau of the personal affairs, much more stronger. So I mean how can I say? Japanese civil service, they are theory, theoretically speaking, similar to the British, but practically similar to the French or Germany. Korea is interesting. Civil service almost the same, but changing. So Korea is following Australian or New Zealand model, open competition. Yeah. However, yeah. I have a lot of Korean friends uh, changing very slowly Korea. Korea because based on the seniority system they don't like an open open recruitment system so on very limited how you change the, the process to be promoted as senior executive MPC yeah. uh, as far I know that one can be promoted if they apply for the open promotion system in Japan you change already this system? no no Open system, very limited. Very, limited. very, very limited. Yeah, yeah. Oh, firstly, uh, proposed such a system, mm -hmm. but actually, it, it is not be it, it is not implemented okay. because civil service against. <laughs> one can move from one ministry to another ministry. Yes, nowadays frequently, yeah. but yes, in my case. I had a work. I had experience working, not only Minister of Finance, but also Minister of Welfare, Cabinet Secretariat, and Foreign Affairs. Yeah. But even though, how can I say, civil service, particularly senior levels, are, we can say numbered, numbered by the parent ministries, mm -hmm. even seconded to the other ministries. I mean, franchise. My franchise, Minister of Finance. Your franchise, Minister of Social Welfare. You are. Franchise Ministry of Foreign Affairs, like this. Yeah. So, okay. Catholic Prime Minister, Abe administrations, again, institutional capacity of Prime Ministers. First of Abe, he failed. Because just one year. And first, uh, sorry, personally speaking, uh, Prime Minister Abe, he doesn't like bureaucrats. He doesn't like bureaucrats. So first Abe administration hostility toward bureaucrats. So bu bureaucrats sabotage, sabotage. But second administration, Prime Minister Abe Chief Cabinet Secretariat, got an idea. How to control bureaucrats? By bureaucrats. You know, bureaucrats uh, who are close to the Prime Minister Abe. They are, you know, they are promoted within the Prime Minister's office or sec Cabinet Secretariat. They control like ministries. Good idea. Fragmented opposition, LDP, domest dominance in both houses. So, and also appointment system. Again, Senior levels, most of senior levels, including Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Finance, become the yes man. Because if you have a different, if you have opinion, different from the Prime Minister, 
different from the cabinet, cabinet office. You will be where, uh, where not dismissed, but uh, transferred to the other post. Yes. So, I mean, most senior, senior civil service don't tell the truth. So, actually, we have several, you know, cases. Not so, you know, personal management, normally not, not open, but allegedly, allegedly, lots of cases where the, some civil service were against the prime minister's idea, mm -hmm. then transferred to the other post. Too obedient. So I think policy making process, yes, Prime Minister Abe established lots of advisory councils, but, well, I'm going to explain it. Pretending. 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 <laughs> Pretending. <laughs> so, okay, interestingly, yes, I explained this model, old model. Yes. It's continuing. Basically, however, old money means if the prime ministries propose new idea, new registrations, ministries require get require to get approval from the ruling party before going to the parliament in advance, in advance, in advance, any registration, any amendment. Ministry need to get approval in advance before Parliament. That means parliamentary discussions is how can I say uh, well doesn't make sense because ruling party is already approved. Just you know oppositions uh, just uh, for opposition arguing, but the decisions that already made. So I mean, dismantling parliamentary democracies. Even the UK, look at the UK. Yes, Prime, British Prime Minister is very strong, but even though they have the lots of parliamentary discussions, I mean, ruling parties often amend government proposal. And those are democracies. So however, what's the difference? with an old model in the second inflation. Some important policies, our Prime Minister Abe, with policies which Prime Minister Abe is interested in, such as national security or free education. Cabinet office, political advisors, chief cabinet secretaries, control boards, like ministries, ruling parties, even the Zoku, Cabinet Secretariat controls Wait, some policy. Where is the opposition in this, in this picture? No, no, opposition doesn't make sense, outside. So, I mean, this is an internal uh, process for policy making. It looks like a British model, looks like, to some extent. So, I mean, some policies, some, only some policies, Prime Minister or the Chief Cabinet Secretary controls everything. Very strong, yes. Then another features, you know, many advisory councils established. So, so this is the nature of the councils established by the legislation or cabinet orders, prime minister's decisions before Abe 34, yeah. after nearly tripled. I counted all the councils on, through the prime minister's website. <laughs> So numbers increase. I mean, because uh, so it's uh, interesting. As I said, P P Abe doesn't like bureaucrats, except bureaucrats of the Ministry of Economic Industries. Economic Industries. So senior officers, uh, Prime Minister Abe is surrounded by the bureaucrats from the mainly from the economic in economic, Ministry of Economic Industries. So, because their, their behavior 
propose new policies every half an year. Every half an year. New idea. Three, do you know the three arrows? You know, three arrows means Prime Minister Abe's first economic policies. Uh, three arrows, uh, uh, monetary policy, fina pub uh, uh, public finance uh, policies, and economic growth policies. Oh, and also, uh, everyone uh, works until longer, one that the centenary life, uh, work life balance, and so on. You know, Attractive ideas developed by the officers of the economic industry. But, yeah? To make clear. Yes, please. Do you mean that Council is uh, member of Council or Council as uh, ad hoc? Ad hoc. Okay. Mainly ad hoc. Okay. Some this are. Is not, not this is not the individual Some are yeah. permanent, like uh, established by the legislation. Permanent. Okay. Like a. Uh, Economic Fiscal Policy Councils. But nowadays, Economic and Fiscal Policy Councils is not so important. Mm -hmm. Lots of, several councils, such by the Prime Minister's decision, is very important. Such as uh, Council of Economic, New Economic Industries. So promote, you know, ICT or uh, new technology innovation like that. Yeah. Yeah. But wow. I, what I want to say, pretending, doing something. You know, prime ministers you know, broadcasted by TV or newspapers, new policies, new ideas. I, I say new policies was, is developed every half a year. Catchy, you know, attractive word, keywords. Provocionalities, yes. But he's not interested in me. You know, for instance, yeah, I don't deny that you know, new technologies, you know, uh, ICT, e-government, blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to say, uh, ministers, ministries, bureaucrats, I'm going to say, they do not seriously yes. consider new ideas. Because if you introduce new policies, you, all, you may be, your idea may be against the best interest. interest. So, I mean, for instance, Prime, okay, Prime Minister, at the beginning, I can give one ex example. At the beginning, Prime Minister uh, addressed, try to deregulate, mm. try to reduce the regulations. Because regulations, you know, most regulations controlled by the Zoku, agriculture, or education, small and medium industries, they are regulated heavily. So Prime Minister Abe addressed, he tried to reduce regulation. Okay, so say, like he said, he himself becomes a drills, drills, you know, drills. Drills, drills broke, break the uh, regulation. However, just uh, argue. Because, yes, you know, you need. Yes. You are very disappointed with Professor Abe and Yes, exactly. <laughs> Why? You know? Sorry. Sorry, yes, 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 exactly. Because he's strong. I think we need, we need the structural reforms, yeah. particularly social welfare system, regulations. Yeah. Because, you know, this model protected like each policy area. Farmers, social, small and medium enterprise. But Prime Minister, they, he could. He's strong enough to change, but he, he doesn't actually do because if you change the regulations, yeah. you, you are against. Then, if, okay, if Prime Minister did reduce the regulations. He may lose the elections. Supporters against reforms. Only a few exceptions. I mean, why I disappointed? He could, but he 
uh, yeah, doesn't actually implement. So, okay, also number of staff of the second secretary at cabinet office increasing. Manage, particularly managing these councils. But again, just a mess. So next, uh, I'm going to the actual so case studies. So several case studies. This is a policy process on national security bill. Again, Prime Minister Abe is a young right wing politician. So he want, you know, his final ambition is amend the constitution, number nine. So constitution number nine prohibits Japan, you know, to increase the military presence. So, yes, Japan constitution prohibits war as a sovereign right of the nation and war potential. And all, all previous government retained constitutional interpretation of that right of the collective defense could not be exerted regardless of the provision of Japan US securities. So this interpretation, interpretation was changed by the Prime Minister Abe. How? Replacing the Cabinet Regal Bureau, Director General. Because in the, in the past, Director General was against change of interpretation. Then, persuading Director Comey. So, Comey is a very liberal partner of the coalition government. Comey party doesn't like uh, you know, military government because they're supported by the, lots of women. So, I mean, overall, change of, changing of the interpretation or more Japanese you know, presence. Well, I mean, against, it's not, it was not easy, in short. It was not easy. But he did, he succeeded, succeeded. Try to persuade partner Komei, and also senior bureaucrats try to, you know, uh, how can I say, uh, soften, so try, try to make it moderate. First idea, much more okay, ambitious. <laughs> uh, again, uh, where he did, he succeeded by exercising his political power political power. He made it. One of the examples, of course someone argued, of course, you know, former director general, lots of director general, former, against change of interpretation. It's harder. Yes, harder, yes. Oh, yes, yeah, all the, you know, all the previous director generals maintained interpretation but changed. Then another e exercise, another, sorry, time is, I'm going to quickly. Okay, Abe postponed consumption tax hike twice, twice. Because ta of course tax hike, people don't like. Yeah. So, but I want to, what I want to argue I'm not saying postpone is, not, is wrong. I'm not saying. Prime Minister can decide whatever he wants. What I want to say, little discussion on the postponement of tax hike within the government, even the Prime Finance Minister, you know, Finance Minister didn't know postponement Postponed, post tax hike was postponed before Prime Minister declared. Is it possible in your country? No. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, without, I mean, without discussion, the finance minister, Prime Minister, and few political advisors dis decided. <laughs> ah, it's not democratic. <laughs> but he can do. Yeah. He can do. Yes, another case is uh, free education. Free education. Yeah, yeah. So,
So, yes, before election, our house election, uh, suddenly, Prime Minister they decided free education in order to win low house election. I mean, okay, I do not deny idea itself, but I mean, free education is not on the priorities. For instance, free education means uh, early childhood education and also higher education. You know, compulsory education almost free in Japan already. But, uh, you know, child care or kindergarten, not, not free. But low income people are already, already free. You know, early childhood education, already free. But what do you mean additionally free early childhood education? Which means, you know, middle and rich people, middle income, rich, high and middle income people also free. I think it makes rich people more advantages because they can save. They invest more in their children. I think disparity expected to increase. So, and interestingly, LDP itself was against free education because previous government, there is free education. So, I mean, LDP, uh, when LDP was an opposition, LDP was against free education. But Abe suddenly proposed free education. I mean, what I want to say, okay, detail, again, detail, detailed discussion. Impact of the free education. So, Minister, Minister of Education also didn't know. I have a question. Yeah, please. Uh, number four. Yeah. 40% of universities in Japan. Oh, it's like, uh, Yeah. Yes, uh, particularly, sorry, it's a private university located in the rural areas. Because, you know, Japanese population is falling, particularly young. Students are falling. National university or university located in Tokyo is okay. We have enough students. But the university in local areas, they don't have enough students. So why don't you ask Indonesian people to come here? Because you know, Japanese is foreign. We, we want to invite more students from abroad. <laughs> Not in the cities, but uh, yeah. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes, you are right. Yeah, yes, right. Education, in higher education, higher education, is also included foreign students. Yes, included, but uh, uh, early childhood free education, totally free, make it free. But higher education, gradually. Firstly, only a student from low income families at the moment. But then try to extend. But I, I don't think it's a good idea. Why don't you provide? Uh, scholarship, yeah. so-called, do you know the so-called contingency, income contingency loans? Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Income contingency loans, once you graduated, you need to pay back, but depending on your income. Mm -hmm. If you are, an, it, is, it is originated primarily by the Australia. Like yes, yes. The bank, the bank. Payment depends on the annual income. Okay. If, I mean, if you are unemployed, you need to pay back. So, I mean, free education, not a good idea. Because, you know, e students, uh, gra university graduates can make more money rather than high school graduates. I mean, subsidizing, as you know, subsidizing higher education may be regressive. So, again, tax hike, higher education, decision was made without serious consideration. That's the uh, Abe ways. That's why I criticize. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Please. Yes, good point. But yes, yes. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, 
I don't know, you yeah, make a point. But, you know, who in the world against the post of the psych? Of course not, everybody agrees. But the borrowing is increasing. You know? I mean, do, do, does it make sense? Borrowing, free education by borrowing. Yeah. But which means future generation pays. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, in other words, this policy, yeah. okay, this policy means, uh, I'm going to say, government send the bills to the young. Yeah, yes. And also, uh, Free education, yes, everybody agrees. So I mean, I mean, Prime Minister, Cabinet is very politically wise, yeah. you know, very very wise, smart, to, smart yeah, very wise to win the election. People, most people don't are not interested in the policy making, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yes, Prime Minister, Cabinet is very smart. Yes, basically satisfied. Because uh, young, because nowadays, yes, now the Japan almost fully employed. Everybody can find j their job. So particularly ja graduates. Ten years ago, graduates, I mean, university graduates cannot, could not find. But nowadays, almost everyone um, graduates can find their job. So I mean, particularly young, Guys, support a prime minister. Oh. Guys, not to you. Yes. Not every time. Not every time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. But I, but I think he is very smart. Very clever, very clever, politically. Playing. He's playing. <laughs> so. He has a big background in education. Uh, Abe. 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 He graduated a uh, small uh, uh, university, not so. You know, he, not so famous university because he's yes father. Yes. He 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 can become politician because his father, political family, political family. That's why he doesn't like bureaucrats. You know, normally bureaucrats graduate from the Tokyo University. Yes. Okay. Time is running out. Again, let me summarize uh, program policy making process. Yes. Again. So I want to, again, number four, Abe administration is strong enough to engage in structural reform. That prompts significant objectives, such as an exam in national security legislation. But this event was an exception. Indeed, they are not interested in urgently needed fiscal consolidation, social welfare reform because addressing these issues will negatively affect the electoral process. Then finally, oh, uh, economic performance. So 2012, Abe became the prime minister. Japanese yen depreciated, depreciated. Yeah, yeah. Then stock prices, you know, get increasing. So first three years, yes, uh, Abe makes was said successfully, but the moment not so, not so. And interestingly, Abe again he wanted to you know revive Japanese economy, but in terms of annual average growth, this is a previous government, uh, previous our uh, center, okay. Nominal GDP growth, yes, Abe is good, perform as well. But if you look at the real GDP growth, Abe administration is slightly less than the previous government. So I mean, even if Abe underlines importance of economic growth and introduces a lot of measures, overall economic performance is not as expected. Because I'm in my observation, his idea, his reforms, not real, just pretending, fake. You, know? you, cannot, you cannot increase the economic growth with a fake policy. Yes. Yes. But he, but he win the elections. 
Yes. Mot Alexa is much more important. Yeah. Much more important. That's what is popular with the people. Yes, yes. But an employment rate is possible. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes. There's some indicate yes. Some indicators suggest a good performance. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you are right. That's why particular unemployment rate. Good. But one important uh, economic agenda of Abe uh, stopped the deflation. 2% CPI growth. Because again, we are struggling with deflation, negative growth of the CPI. So uh, the target, 2% CPI. Then he changed the bank of governance. So extraordinary monetary policy. So CPI is okay, core inflation. So it's deflation, negative. Then, yes, at the beginning, increasing, but falling again. So yes, deflation means, it's a fundamental problem from the economic sense. Deflation means your income does not increase. So why well, economic Japanese economy uh, does not increase as expected. Companies, yes, they huge. They have huge profit, mainly due to the depreciation. Toyota, Nissan, they make a huge profit due to the depreciation. Yeah. On the other hand, families, people don't spend because income is falling. Yeah. Wages, real wages, actually falling. That's a, you know, Japanese economy is stagnated so long. Yes, our administration, they understand the wages, the problem in wages. They try to do some, but at the moment, that makes sense. That's a fundamental problem in Japanese economy. Wages does not increase. Governance indicator. Yes, I mean, yeah. I, I would like to compare if the authoritarian uh, leaders like Abe um, okay. sitting okay. in the prime minister. Okay, office. good point. But uh, yeah. sorry, just a quotation. So okay, just jump to the. Okay, so next one is uh, I'm, I, this is still I'm, I'm doing I'm doing studies, not concluded. So I am now comparing the decision making process between the major OECD countries based on efficiency, three criteria, efficiency, consensus, and also scientific analysis. I would say the contestabilities. Contestabilities. So, okay, so some academics classified major OECD countries by consensus building and efficiency. So you can see, okay, UK is Consensus is low, yeah. but you can decide quickly. High. But also some countries, okay, Sweden, Norway, consensus also important, efficiency, not so bad. But also I want to analyze, in addition to criteria, but also you know, contestability. Okay, skip. But contestability matters in policy making process. So I'll skip this one. Now I'm doing some research. Okay, I, so I classify three groups like this. Westminster models, consensus and corporate model, Netherlands, Sweden, group C in the middle group A and B, Germany and Japan. So it's still just a preliminary analysis, but indicators. This is taken from the German think tank, Bertman Stiftung. They compared, they measured uh, three indicators such as policy performance, quality of democracy, and governance among the OECD European countries. So one of the three, the governance, based on executive capacity, including strategic capacity, international coordination, evidence-based, evidence-based, yes. consultation, effective implementation, and also executive accountability, citizen participation, or uh, 
Medi Media Political Interest Association. Then they ranked. So it's not easy to read. Number one, Sweden, Denmark, Australia here, Germany. Unfortunately, Japan is ranked 24th. So lower countries, France, Chile, Malta, Turkey, Colombia, a little bit, you know, uh, you know, less developed countries, less developed countries. Particularly, where I think the weak point of Japan, evidence-based policies or strategic capacity to some extent. But I'm not saying it is correct or not. Just you know, elephants. But I, I, I do believe governance, okay, sorry. Uh, in terms of the governance, in terms of efficiency, yes. our administration is very good, very good. But consensus, in the past, in the past, Japanese politics was featured by the consensus oriented country in the past. In the past. In the past. Slow. Now it's gone. Yeah, yeah. Then further, in the past, bureaucrats, I think bureaucrats was good or strong to provide you know, good policies. Yes, yes. Because yes. good policies. Yes. Because I mean they're you know they were brave for the politician. Mm. But nowadays, you know, just a yes man. We can win. <laughs> just yes man to the politician. I'm not saying I'm not saying bureaucrats should against the politicians, you know? But firstly, provide evidence, information, analysis, discussion. Then finally, cabinet prime minister decides whatever he wants, he or she wants. But discussion, analysis, go. Because bureaucrats think analysis, discussion are useless. <laughs> useless. Okay, the, this is my analysis. This is, uh, uh, I compared major OECD countries, fiscal transparency. I'm not going into details. For instance, okay, if you, do you, you have fiscal rules or ta report on tax expenditures, blah, blah, blah. 20 criteria. So, sorry, missing. <laughs> English-speaking countries, yes, very good. 17, 17 or I can give you the my presentation later. Yeah, okay, thank you. So 70, 80, or Japan, just seven out of 20 criteria. So this is my major. Budgetary institution in Japan is not so good. In the past, yes, Ministry of Finance, Ja bureaucrats, finance ministry, very strong. So we miss finance, could control everything. But now weakening, but also transparency is not so good. But public finance, transparency is very important. Needless to say. And finding comparison, yes, I, I, I'm not going to. Conclusion. Yes, Stor I don't deny the strength of prime minister. Of course, I, don't, I, I never deny. But you need to check and balance. And particularly political neutrality with civil servant. Now, but undermined. And overall, our administration undermined quality of policy making. So we need parliamentary oversight. Not only bureaucrats, you know, bureaucrats now too obedient but also ruling, ruling parties, too obedient to the prime minister. Yeah. And port, again, political neutrality. So I may be exaggerating, but uh, I think this is the reality of current Japanese politics and administration. Thank Only you. a few tell the truth in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It, yeah. The inside story of the successful of, of the administration, yeah? Yeah. even though it's quite <laughs> critical, but uh, we're really glad that 
we get some sort of perspective from you as an expert. Thank you, thank you very much. So we still have like five minutes. Yes, okay, but I don't mind. You don't yeah, mind. we have plenty of time. I have plenty of time. So, so if there are questions mind. from just small question. Yeah, no, no, it's okay. What is the age of retirement of the civil servant in Japan? Is oh, there yes, even similar? At the moment, official retirement is 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. 60. But now, government tried to post uh, extend to the 65. At the moment, 60. Not only government, but also private companies. 60 is official retirement age. 60. 60. Because in other countries, like in South Korea, below, yeah, below 60. Okay. 50, 50. Okay, Japan 60. But now, try to, you know, Extend about 65 because Japan, you know, getting older and older, but even 60, very young, very active. Then, you know, total population is falling. That means even the elderly require to, are required to work longer. Yes. So what do you think uh, exactly. the successful I mean, policy and economics that makes it able to create jobs? Uh, well, I think... Kind of, is it trade policy? Is it uh, industrial policy? Or what kind of uh, economic uh, policy well, specifically that creates jobs for... Well, yes, fact is uh, number of jobs is increasing. But I don't think it is mainly due to the government policies. Okay. Mainly, I'm not saying I'm not saying ma due to the mainly due to the government policies. Just the business cycles. Just the business cycles. Yes, okay. depreciation of yen and uh, stock high stock, pr stock price due to the business cycles. Mm. So, so the number of jobs is increasing, rather than you know, government policies. Okay. So My observation. Yeah. yeah. So you think it's timing is very lucky. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Abe is lucky. <laughs> Abe is very lucky. <laughs> yes, Abe is really. What's the impact of uh, updating to the local government? Yes, uh, local government, particularly public finance, getting better and better. Getting better. Better. Yes. So, in short, in aggregate term, local public finance, uh, they have uh, uh, surplus. On the other wild central government deficit. So local government now they are mainly they are happy. But however, even though again total population is falling, lots of rural rural areas you know, looks like abandoned, abandoned. So still they are struggling because lots of in, you know, industries factories go. I mean. In other words, Tokyo is getting more and more centralized. Yeah, centralized. I mean, most rural, uh, population rural areas falling. Now there's only Tokyo and Osaka population is increasing. Rural, more, almost all local government population is falling, more or less, or except a few cities. Yeah. <laughs> Abe, yes. Uh, one of the one of the Abe mix is uh, uh, revitalizing local government, locals, yeah. attract more people in local government, but it failed. I think the Abe administration has been doing a lot of measures, introducing more incentive <laughs> to local governments. I think uh, not effective. Oh, you, you make a good point. <laughs> you make a point. So, so far, you know, becoming the civil service in this particular central government, you know, best and brightest. For instance, graduates of Tokyo University, particularly faculty roles, Tokyo University, the graduates, they wanted to become the civil service. You know? 
But nowadays, popularity is falling. Graduates from the faculty of law, Tokyo University, firstly, they prefer okay, foreign financial company like uh, yes, yes, Citibank, Goldman Sachs, or, the gold, or consultant, or becoming lawyers. So civil science popularity is falling. So, I mean, number of applicants to central government. I think within, the two, within the 20 years, nearly half, or one, quarter, uh, one third. Why? Lots of people wanted to become uh, local government civil service. Because civil service in local government. You know, local civil service in local government, they are elite. Best and brightest in the lo local areas. Yes. Local areas. They are they are best and brightest. And they 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 don't have to work hard. Exactly. 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 Yes, yeah, exactly. People, you know, young, young prefer so-called work and life, work and life balance. But working in the central government, very severe. You need to work seven days a week. 24 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> That's another problem. Yeah. Okay. So from the other back, is there any question? Yep. Is there any question? Students back now? Okay, so with this, I will conclude yeah, thank the you. presentation. Thank you again. And thank, you. Please give a thank you very much indeed. Thank you. I really enjoyed the discussion. Discussion. I'll send the presentation later. Yeah. So before we really close, we want to give a token of appreciation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank, thank, you so thank you so much. 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 Okay. Oh, another. This is made by oh, okay. students. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you very much. much. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. I really enjoyed. Thank you, okay. thank you so very much. Nice thank you so much.